Hi, in this video series, we will take an early look at Animation Nodes 2.1 in Blender 2.8. First, we have to get it working, and this currently does take some effort. We can download the test build from this address. The link is also down below. And then install the plugin in Blender 2.8 just like we would any other plugin. But many things in this test build are not working or even crashing Blender at the moment. In fact, you can't even enable the plugin out of the box. My workaround for this is I use GitHub Desktop to fetch the Blender 2.8 branch of the Animation Nodes repository and then simply copy all the Python files from that repo into the plugin directory of my Blender 2.8 installation, overwriting the files that are there. That way I get the latest updates while developers are working on the source code of Animation Nodes. And every time before I start 2.8, and want to use animation nodes, I simply fetch the origin again and check if there's anything new. And if there is, I overwrite the plugin files with the new files again. Once the newest Python files are in the plugin directory, you can enable the plugin in Blender. Of course, if you're watching this at a later time, you will not have to do any of this. Simply download the latest release and install it. If you have never used animation nodes before, I can recommend a series of very good tutorials by Zach Hickson which I will also link to in the description. You should watch his tutorials since they give you an, a really good overview of how animation works and how it's meant to be used. Like I said, not all of the features shown there are available for 2.8 yet, but I'm hoping they will be soon. Basically, Animation Nodes makes it possible to manipulate things in Blender programmatically, but without having to write any code. Instead, we use node trees, similar to the node trees we know and love for creating materials. Animation Nodes comes with an abundance of different nodes for a variety of different data types and operations, and it can be very overwhelming at first. For people who are familiar with programming, procedures, functions, and loops, Animation Nodes should not be too hard to get into. The great thing about Blender in general, and Animation Nodes in particular, is that there are plenty of resources out there to get learning. As the name would suggest, we can use animation nodes for creating interesting motion graphics, but also to quickly generate and manipulate objects even for still images. I have done that many times in the past simply because it makes more sense to me to quickly put together a loop to instance and position objects than doing it manually. Now with the speed of EV, more and more people will use Blender for creating animations of all sorts of things and the combination with animation nodes will be simply amazing. Okay, now that we have animation nodes in Blender 2.8, let's check out some features. I have recently posted two videos on my YouTube channel of some things I have tried out and people asked for tutorials on how to make those kinds of things. Since some features don't work at all or not correctly yet, we can only do relatively simple things for now. And I also want to keep these tutorials short and easy to follow. I also have to note that at the moment, with Blender 2.8 in beta and Animation Nodes 2.1 development only just starting for Blender 2.8, rendering crashes regularly with auto-execution enabled, and the only solution I could find was to bake the animations to keyframes and disable auto-execution while rendering. Since this doesn't work for everything Animation Nodes can do, I had to manually render and save each frame for some final renders, which is no fun. One feature that currently doesn't work is particle systems. The particle data node doesn't produce any output. Audio also didn't work for me. As soon as these things are fixed, I will surely play with them and make more videos. If you are new to animation nodes, I hope you will get a feel for how to use this amazing plugin. And if you already know all about animation nodes, then please let me know if there is anything I should be doing differently. I also want to give a quick shout out to Shax Lucke and thank him and the other developers for this truly amazing plugin. I will go through an, a bunch of animations and create a series of tutorials so you can pick whichever one is of interest to you. I will start with the simplest one right here, right now, and get into the more complex setups in the following videos. Okay, let's get started. Here I am in Blender 2.8 and first I'm just going to delete everything. I'm going to set up my scene by adding a plane, scaling it up in edit mode and creating 
sort of a seamless backdrop like this w shade smooth and that's it um, now i'm gonna go to top view and add a couple of lamps and place it right here and maybe another one over here and this one i'm going to set to blue and this one to red okay i'm gonna split the view and set this to the rendered output I'm also going to add a camera, rotate it 90 degrees and move it like this. Okay, so now in the middle here, in the center, we will place our meta balls and then use animation nodes to animate them. Right, I'm going to pull up this window and switch over to animation nodes right here so down here we can create a new animation node tree hit t on the keyboard to open the toolbar on the left and right here you see auto execution is enabled and the first thing i always do is switch off always and switch on those three options now with animation nodes we usually need some sort of object in our scene that we can then duplicate and uh, manipulate. So let me just quickly add um, my meta ball right here. Maybe scale it down a little. And in the meta ball settings, we can also increase the resolution for the view so that they appear rounder. Okay, so now we have one meta ball. And of course, to get the animation that we want, we need several of them. And we're going to use animation nodes to instance this meta ball and then animate them. So first thing is we are going to need an object instancer. This is probably one of the most used nodes in animation nodes. And we simply click this eyedropper to put the selected object, our meta ball, in it. I also enable these two settings. Here I can set how many instances I wish to have. Let's say we want 20 meta balls. And you can see over here in the collection that has been created by animation nodes that we actually have 20 meta balls in here. And they're all at the same location with the same size. So this is not very exciting. Yet, as you know, each object in Blender has a location, a rotation, and a scale. A location with an X, Y, and a C coordinate is a vector in animation nodes. So, whenever you have to deal with a location, you have to deal with vectors. In order to change the location of an object with animation nodes, we need an object transform output, which takes one object as an input. And by enabling the location here, X, Y, Z, we can change its location. So we can change these parameters using animation nodes. Now the cool thing with animation nodes is also that you can have single objects or single vectors, but you can also have lists and animation nodes changes those sockets from a solid color to a transparent dot here. So here, this is a list of objects. So the output of this node is a list of objects. And as soon as I plug it in here, this node can also handle lists of objects. And now we can plug in a list of locations where we want the 20 meta balls to be moved to. If I change the x value here, I'm changing the x value of all 20 of those meta balls, right? Now, animation nodes comes with a very cool node, which is the vector wiggle node. And what that does is it creates a vector, a position in 3D space 
that is sort of randomized around the origin point uh, with an amplitude that you can set here. And it creates a single vector unless you enable this option here. Now it creates a list of vectors. Right, so how many vectors do we want? So for 20 instances of metaballs, we also want 20 vectors. And to keep this a bit neater, I would actually create a number integer input, set this to 20 and use it for this input and this input. So now I only have to change one value to get 20 metaball instances and 20 wiggle vectors. So as you can see already here, the vector wiggle node moved the nodes around with an amplitude of 5, 5 and 5 in x, y and z direction. Now I don't think I want the z direction to be that much. I want to keep them together you know, in my, in my 16 by 9 animation frame here. So I take down the C, maybe even the X a little bit so that they stay within the frame. And the Y, keep them really together to make this sort of shape here. And you can see whenever I change something here, because of this auto execution, three changed checkbox. It updates those 20 ball, meta balls here uh, automatically. Okay, now we can see we have a bit of an issue. Our stage here is at zero height and the meta balls go all the way down because our C amplitude here, uh, that value is uh, up and down. So we have to move all of them up a little. Now, of course, we're gonna use animation nodes for that again. We just add a vector math node, which is here. And we're going to use the vectors that are being created here, those random positions. And we add a little bit to the C-axis. Okay. I think I'm gonna pull the camera back a little and also make my stage a bit bigger. Cool, so now this is, this is what we have. Now to animate this, the vector wiggle node comes with an evolution input. And when I change this evolution input, you can see that things start to move around. How can we animate this? Well, we simply plug in the animation time info, the frame number. Let me quickly open a timeline down here. So this is our frame number. We plug in the frame number into the evolution and now when we play the animation, the locations are being randomized through this vector wiggle with an evolution of the frame number. And we get 20 meter balls 20 random vectors, we move all of them up a little on the c-axis and transform our objects here to these new locations. And that's all we have to do to get this animation. Now let me just quickly enable screen space reflections, give those meta balls, actually my First meta ball a new material, make it metallic so that it looks kind of interesting. Maybe add another lamp in the front here, make it white and take down. Well, let's put it on top. I think that's what I did with the other animation. So. Okay, and now all we have to do is make this look interesting. And when we play our animation, this is what we get. Okay, so to recap, 
in this setup, we didn't have to create any loops or anything. We just used the fact that animation nodes can, or most animation nodes, nodes can handle uh, single objects or multiple objects, lists of objects, lists of vectors, and we used the current frame number to randomize the positions of the vector wiggle node. We moved them up a little by piping those 20 vectors through the vector math and add something on the c-axis. And then the object transform output node simply moves those 20 objects to those 20 locations. The transform output node also has inputs for rotation and scale, which you can enable here, enable here. And now to take this a step further, we could use another vector wiggle, plug this into the uh, evolution again, take a different seed value, plug that into the scale. And as you can see here, let me just set this to one. And now when we play, we also get randomized scales. Same thing could be done with the rotation. Here I'm changing the C location to pull them up a little so they don't go through the floor. Maybe the X amplitude is a bit high and the C amplitude too. Oh, we can do all of this in real time here, which is pretty nice, I think. Now this meta ball that's standing that, uh, still down here, that's the one that we created manually that we're using to create the 20 instances of. And we can simply move that down on the C axis so we don't see it. That's it. That's a pretty simple node setup in animation nodes to get this sort of effect. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. In the next video, we will create a more complex animation nodes tree. See you there.